The Legion season finale is upon us, and we're literally prepared for anything, including that mid credit scene. Yep, that's right. Can David defeat the Shadow King once and for all? Will Professor X show up and save his son from Division 3 in this wannabe Two-Face? Or will Sid and David just spend the entire episode here? Can we go back? Probably not. So while we have a ton of questions, there are a few things that we already know. Actually, more than a few things, that's why we made this list. Here are eight things to know about Legion before watching the season finale. Just a reminder guys, if you're a fan of Legion, make sure you hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss any of our coverage. In the coming weeks, we'll be breaking down the finale, looking ahead at season two, and much, much more. Let's start with his origin story. We know that David Holler was adopted and that his father is none other than Professor X, thanks to that very handy chalkboard animation. We also see a shot of Xavier's wheelchair during the Shadow King's interrogation of Amy. Throughout his life, David's powers were misdiagnosed by doctors who kept him heavily medicated and inside mental institutions. He's one of the most powerful mutants in comic book history, and he's just beginning to realize his potential. When and where does this show take place? That, we're not so sure of. We've seen the suburbs, the city, the Clockwork's mental institution, and some cozy camping retreat vibes at Summerland. It's okay, though, that I brought you here. What? Yeah, of course. Are you kidding? Well, this place is beautiful. The same goes for the time period. It's not so clear when the story takes place, and the filmmakers wanted it that way. The costumes, props, and pop culture references reveal a vastly unique and authentic universe. Singing along with the radio, 99 love balloons. Speaking of Patonomy, where the hell did he get that Tommy gun? Every single detail in this show has meaning, even the props. Believe me, the eye told us. Case in point, the flashlight that the Shadow King uses in Chapter 7. HMS Ambush is clearly written on it, which refers to three ships, an American gunboat, and two submarines of the Royal Navy. I'm guessing it's there to signify the Shadow King's immense power and threat to everyone. The more modern sub is capable of detecting vessels on the other side of the ocean, just as the Shadow King can do when attached to David. The contrasting time periods also serve as a reminder of the Shadow King's power. Reality for David has become a mishmash of times, places, events, and flashbacks. He's not the most reliable narrator, which makes sense because his memories have been altered repeatedly, and the parasite inside of him can create his own version of reality. In the comic books, the Shadow King was a longtime nemesis of the X-Men, and the same goes here. Before possessing David, he fought Professor X and lost. His consolation prize was tracking down his son and attaching himself to his powerful offspring. In David's mind, he's manifested as a dog, as the angriest boy in the world, as Lenny and Benny, and as the devil with yellow eyes. Besides scaring the shit out of David since birth, he's also able to rewrite memories. Uh, he makes you forget. Noah Hawley and the production team behind Legion do an excellent job of showing the Shadow King's influence over David. The use of red lighting conveys the fear that David has for the Shadow King. Another storytelling device is the use of insects that we've seen on strawberries, a slice of pie, and even on Amy's hand during a troubling scene. Deep down, it's all we can do to keep from puking whenever you're around. <laughs> the main takeaway here is that the Shadow King has deeply infected the mind of our lead character. Legion is an Omega level mutant, and last episode we saw David beginning to flex those powers. The long list of powers that we've seen throughout the show include telekinesis, telepathy, teleportation, matter manipulation, time manipulation, sound manipulation, levitation, oh, and the power to blow people the f up and whatever he did to this guy to make him smoke. He's also able to create a rational mind to get him out of trouble. To help you find a way out of here before this thing takes control of our body forever. Oh. We love the fact that his rational mind was a British version of David, seeing as how Dan Stevens is in fact British himself. One additional thing to note here is Carrie's invention, that homemade halo for David that literally frees him from the Shadow King's influence. We've seen similar devices in the comics, such as the neural switchboard wristband and Lionheart's collar used to trap the Shadow King in Dark Xavier's body. Comic book fans are no stranger to the astral plane, but some newcomers to Marvel might be. It's an alternate dimension where all matter is made up of ectoplasm. Like, right now, my astral body is sleeping at home. We saw this in Doctor Strange as well. Some of the strongest mutants, psychics, and sorcerers are able to project their spirit into the realm. This is where some mind-blowing happens. What did you just do to me? I pushed your astral form out of your physical form. What's in that tea? 
In Legion, we were introduced to Oliver on the astral plane. His problem is that he spent too much time here and couldn't get back to reality. However, he was able to create a safe zone, an igloo where he pretty much just hangs out, drinks whiskey, and listens to records. You turn it off. Oliver's diving suit, the Jules Verne, allows him to move freely in and out of the dimension. Let's talk about David's fashion sense. The wardrobe department has done a stellar job at using iconography to convey David's mental state and evoke his superhero origins. Even Superman would be proud. In the second episode, David is on a quest to find himself. He's missing parts of his memories. We see him rocking this cool looking vest and a circle with a square missing from it. I also have to point out that the red L is a dead giveaway for Legion. Nice job, guys. Next episode, David wears a shirt with an arrow pointing over his shoulder during a moment of uncertainty. In the following episode, David is in turmoil while running from the Shadow King. He's wearing a blue tornado. And when the Shadow King took control of David, he's seen with a yellow triangle pointing right at him. These icons can also be attributed to various things, including the all-seeing eye, Masonic symbology, and even Back to the Future. Great Scott. Finally, how about some questions that we hope are answered in the season finale? We've seen numerous references to the stars. What did the stars say? Dr. Poole asked David, what did the stars say? What does space have to do with all this? Also, what happened at Red Hook? But if the readings are right, he may be the most powerful mutant that we have ever encountered. <laughs> After what happened in Red Hook, I'd say that's an understatement. Did David hurt a bunch of people? Was this another mental institution? One question that we still have that was just brought up in Chapter 7, the Shadow King asked Amy some specifics about David's real parents. What are you doing? Why are you doing this? He was just a baby. What is it that he's looking for? Is it a specific memory? Is it the location of Professor X? Does Amy know anything about this? Thanks to help from our YouTube viewers, we were able to decode some details from Chapter 7, specifically this shot from the Shadow King's control center, KMO TBL question mark, which translates to who are you in Russian. It's a neat little detail, but what does it mean? We'll have to wait and see. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe because we have a lot more Legion coming your way.